Good evening and welcome to High Five Reloaded. I'm your host, Crystal Gift. So all of you tuned in with us for the next hour, I thank you and we hope to have an interesting program. As we discuss tonight, uh, the fortunes of Jack Warner and the ILP. Um, you know, the situation, this is, this is a most unique situation, to say the least. The fact that somebody has been arrested and charged is not so unique. I mean, it happens almost all the time. But what Mr. Warner sought to do with the ILP was quite remarkable, and that journey may not yet be over. What we're going to be discussing this evening is the implications of his arrests, and uh, the fortunes of the ILP as we go towards the 2015 national elections. Now, with my, I have as my guest this evening, on my immediate right, Anderson Charles from the press. On his immediate right is Mr. Martin George, attorney at law. And on his right, Mr. Barry Nelson, political commentator. Gentlemen, Welcome and good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Well, any opening remarks on this most dramatic development? To me, I don't know how you all felt, but it was almost like finally the other shoe fell. I mean, and I say that for the reason that with all the claims that had been made about Mr. Warner, especially going into that um, by-election, and continue to be made. For example, about two weeks ago, I saw something in the newspapers where an Egyptian minister of government was alleging that back when, I'm not sure which one of the um, football matches that he was referring to, but that he had in fact been approached to make a bribe. And he <laughs> called the name. He called this gentleman's name as the person who approached him. And when he took it to his government, they declined to, um, to accept the offer, as it were, the invitation. The invitation, the invitation yeah. yeah. And now we see in the papers this week, Australia, who has said it more than once, Australia is saying, hey, we want our money back. And, and they keep arguing, and they, apparently they're proposing to notify the American, the American judicial system about it. So in a sense, you had everybody figuring Everybody's talking about it, so perhaps it could be true, it may be true, we have to wait and see. And when it finally happens, to me that's like the dropping of the other shoe. Yeah, and the timing couldn't be worse for Mr. Warner and his party because um, he had just announced that he was planning to contest all 41 mm -hmm. seats in the election. You know, so um, I think it really brings a big credibility issue for the party, which basically revolves around Mr. Warner's larger-than-life persona. You know, he has been the ILP. No, no matter which way you cut it, slice it, or dice it, the party has really been largely Mr. Jack Warner. We've seen him lose the chairman. Um, first was Robin Montano, who left. Then you also saw Lindira Udet leave. You know, then you saw the um, councillor um, who took him to court over the defamation issue. You know, so he has lost people repeatedly. But the point is, he has really been the mainstay. And with these allegations, um, it becomes difficult for the public, really, I think, um, when they have to make that choice come 2015 general elections. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good night. Uh, and because I beg to ask a question, these allegations, it's not, uh, these charges of allegations, it's not new. Well, it's actually, there are the more allegations now. Charges. No, well, right. But what I'm saying, before he came into politics, mm -hmm. and before he he's, he's won his seat in the by in the by election, no, in the no. in elections to be a parliamentary election, right. he went to they, the by election. No, no, before the by election. Before the, oh, in 2010, the 2010, election, right? 2007. Okay. So, mm -hmm. what what makes the scenario much different from from back then? And I, you know, it is it is worldwide known that FIFA have FIFA have different rules, and 
No, but, but, but Barry, that, that, that's a simplistic approach. No, but yeah, but of respect because mm -hmm. there's a vast difference between mm -hmm. someone, you know, walking around saying, well, you know, John Brown may have stolen ABC. Mm -hmm. And then now if you have charges laid against John Brown and then you have a request mm -hmm. for an extradition of John Brown to no, come I, to face charges, mm -hmm. it does put it in a different scenario. I don't think, if you I, look I, at Mr. Warner's reaction, mm -hmm. his reaction to this has not been the same as his reaction previously. He is obviously treating this in a very different category so and I think the public would with the greatest of respect I can't see someone saying that well this is just the same as before mm -hmm. this has made worldwide news you had the US Attorney General giving a press conference detailing a history that they've been investigating and she said that look Mr. Warner is a central figure to these investigations and to the charges so I mean I, I, I you know while I understand that allegations may have been swirling around it's a, a, a slightly different it's context now because you are now within the legal system right. in that there are consequences that you have to face up to one way or the other. And I agree but, but this is Trinidad and Tobago. And meaning what? Meaning, meaning what? that how we do we view how do, from, from, from history how do we view people with, with allegations and charges against them? From from a from a political from a political perspective. Oh, I think I know what you're getting at. Yeah. You're, you're talking about the cynicism exactly. of seeing people charged yeah. seemingly with difficult, challenging, yeah. um, serious offenses, and it, they either get off through some loophole. Not only get off, but the, but the public it just the goes on right, forever without, without from them. this. From, but, from but what I've seen here, there is public sympathy for, for Jack Water. No, there may be public sympathy to the way that things have been handled yeah. subsequent yeah. to him being charged. Yeah. But the thing is, I'm not sure that there's public sympathy to say he should not be charged because I'm not sure anyone in the public is in a position to say, look, I have evidence to show that he ought not to be charged. Mm. I mean, even Mr. Warner himself has not yet put forth that evidence. So um, I think that there, there's a difference in terms of how you look at the question of the sympathy, in addition to which, there is a difference between someone who may be facing charges locally and now this is something international and you have an international arrest warrant being issued for his you know extradition so i, I think it's in a slightly different category yeah, I and mean, I, I don't think the cynicism would necessarily play out because if you look at the ish and steve matters mm -hmm. as a comparator you would recall that their biggest fight was that they did not want to go to face mm -hmm. the charges in the U.S. Yeah. Clearly, yeah. they have put them in a different category from maybe the same cynicism you're talking about with local charges because mm -hmm. their local charges have been dragging on for years. And yes, the cynicism would kick in there mm -hmm. because people may say, well, maybe nothing might come of it. But clearly, they understand the difference. And I think the public understands the difference between, hey, listen, you're facing those charges here and you're facing those charges in the U.S. It's usually a different kettle right. of fish. Okay. And, right. Okay. But we need to... Put Put in context that these charges does not relate to funds that belongs to the state of Trinidad and Tobago. Whereas, no, no, I'm not saying no, no, no. But we need to put that in the mix. No, as, we need no. As I against those, not has, public, has he, am, you know, has as he I understand the, the public person. has been doing that. That that issue mm. came up in the by-election, and in fact, I began to hear tones of it where people were saying, "Look, you know, they were even suggesting that this man makes." a better candidate for prime minister because and they, they turn logic on its head and say well look you have all these allegations against this man and he's still walking free and nobody has been able to catch him so that right. he better than anybody else would be able to stop this but not just that remember um, it got so bad during the lead up to the elections remember when he had uh, when he had in on, on the platform the minister from Guyana who came down yeah. and said you yeah. know what is wrong with him teeth yeah. if he teeth from a white man yeah. he teeth from white people thing. you remember saying it whatever so, allegations of theft they were didn't relate to any local institution they were all foreigners so mm. as if to suggest if it was done it's okay if it's done against them. and there was a tremendous oh, backlash yeah. when that statement was made yeah. you know so um i don't think that the people but necessarily we, buy we into that, that. Won, we won the scene also no but that, that's not the point yeah but there, but was, a backlash, there, was, a there backlash, was a backlash, backlash from that statement yeah. Yeah. yes yes yeah, yeah. Right, you see yeah. so therefore barry i think that the public is not going to simply say well look it's not trinidad and tobago funds and then i mean with the greatest of respect i am not sure that the charges 
funds that they uh, have laid don't in any way relate to Trinidad and Tobago funds because I recall one, in one instance they made an allegation where they said that there was something that was due to CONCACAF and it was it ended up commingled in his personal account. Are so if for Haiti? Uh, no, they didn't main, mention the Haiti fund at that point. But the point is, if those funds were in some way to benefit Trinidad and Tobago, in fact, the Australians, I think, they specifically spoke about their contribution being towards some development Bravini. in Trinidad. Bravini. So, so therefore, it, it's not as simple as to say that it's not things to benefit right. Trinidad so and Tobago. So what you are saying that you are saying that you have confidence in the voting public of Trinidad and Tobago that we the, the, we would have made that turn in how we look at the quote-unquote white collar crime in terms of who we who, who we put into office um i would think that in a direct circumstance such as this yes not in the wider context i i accept your point in other words if it is that you have political institutions that have been institutionalizing white collar crime mm -hmm. as a unit but without the specific charges against one individual, then that's a different thing. But now in this case, I think the public is making a distinction because it's one individual who is not just charged but it's also internationally charged. And he's not charged alone. Remember, there are quite a lot of others. So that lends some validity and credence to the whole process. It doesn't mean that any of the charges will be proven and everybody's innocent until oh, so proven sons, guilty. So his sons who would, have, who would have been indicted since in 2013, they have already pleaded guilty. Uh, been assisting the, the, the American authorities. Well, I mean, admittedly, those were to other charges. But the point yeah. is, who knows, maybe if you dig deep enough, there might be some underlying connection. And yeah, I think but, that's what but, uh, um, but persons to be are very concerned honest, about. I am awaiting with waiting breath within the 60 days period that these people bring the case, the priority case. I want to see what, what is the evidence is upon it, which yeah, it, it, to be it rests. Yeah. And I think that is very important to see the, the, the way forward. Well, from what I understand, I think um, Mr. Jennings, um, mm. the reporter who had been hounding Mr. Warner for most of his adult life, um, he mm. indicated that he had been instrumental in providing some of the information and um, evidence um, to f the investigators, the FBI investigators. So it appears that there were some documents that were passed along, mm -hmm. and I would imagine that um, based on their raids on the, on the FIFA office in Zurich, remember they did raid the office yeah. there and also. And also they raided the office, the, the Conquer Conquer office, office in, in Miami. That's right, yes. They raided that, and they collected um, computers and other documents. But obviously they must have had evidence before that well, yeah, because exactly the request was made before exactly that, exactly yes. So I, 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 I would think that that's more for supporting evidence that they were looking for. So yes, we have to wait and see what the evidence is that they're bringing. All right, at this point, we'll take our first break for the evening and we'll be back shortly. Stick around. All right, so we're back. We're speaking and we're talking about the developments in the ILP and in particular with Mr. Jack Warner and the extradition proceedings against him. Um, uh, Tell me something, Anderson. What's, what have you heard about the resources of Mr. Warner? Well, based on the, um, the, the reports coming out from the international media, and also, remember, his sons would have um, pleaded guilty to um, indictments that were, that were made since in 2013. And they have been cooperating, along with uh, uh, Mr. Chuck Blazer, mm -hmm. uh, he's a US citizen, who was a very close uh, ally of Mr. Warner. And uh, among those three um, individuals, I think they were able to get access to all of um, Mr. Warner's accounts, where, wherever they were. And the, the United States Department have frozen those accounts. So that, uh, Mr. Warner has not been able to, to have access to his money. Mm. As a result, we, this guy, this counselor guy, from former IRP guy, who would have, Warner Syria. Yes, who would oh, have bought oh, a, a mm. suit against Mr. Warner and would have been awarded um, $250,000. He said that he has been attempting to, 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 to get the money from Mr. Warner and that all attempts are future. So he's now filing bankruptcy proceedings against him to ensure that Mr. Warner would not be able to, 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 to contest the general election 2015. 
Well, I, my, I, I, that raises the point about eligibility. Yes, it does. For it the does 2015 It does election. indeed. Um, because the thing is, one of the things that um, the law sets out under the Representation of the People Act is that you must not be a bankrupt. You must be not be declared a bankrupt. Um, in order among to other things. Among, among, <laughs> among other things. Um, mm -hmm. Because, of course, um, there's a question of the offenses, I mean, I don't know how speedily that will proceed um, in terms of our election timeline. That will take a lot of time. But the point is, yes, because uh, there would be the challenges to the to extradition. That's might right. even go straight to the Privy Council. Yes. Know? But um, in terms of I mean, what Mr. Charles is sharing about um, his assets being frozen, I haven't seen that or I read of that. Mean. That, I mean, it's not something I've heard of. Um, but, I mean, Mr. Charles is in the media, so I would assume <laughs> that he has his nose to the ground yes, more than anything yes, else in that regard. Yes, yes. But, Mr. Gift, in terms of your question as regards eligibility, um, I think that it's a question of Mr. Warner deciding whether he is going to throw the, down the gauntlet and say, well, look, I'm still going ahead. And I think, basically, you, you saw what the headlines were today, um, yesterday. He said, I have nothing to lose. So I think he is at that point. But interestingly enough, I would have thought that he had already lost the Shogunas West seat even before yes, even. this well, that's what incident the arose. That's why he has nothing to that's, lose. And that's why, in a sense, if you notice, very cleverly, when they asked him, well, okay, which seat are you going to run for? He says, I haven't decided yet. Now, this yeah. is a seat mm -hmm. you won by the largest margin in history. Mm -hmm. If you are undecided about running for that seat, that tells me something mm -hmm. that, look, the tide has already turned in terms of his mm -hmm. personal credibility among his constituents. Now, I think that had nothing to do with the FIFA incident, right. and it certainly turned, I think, before the FIFA mm -hmm. incident. Mm -hmm. So, therefore, when you put that in context, if you as the leader do not have enough credibility to win in what is supposed to have been your strongest seat, then I think really as a party, you know, I mean, um, I think the, the, the idea is just to be a spoiler, you know, basically, and uh, maybe to see if you can leverage that at some point with maybe some accommodation or something of the sort. But really, I, I don't think the ILP is approaching this election with any realistic hope of winning any single seat. Because if you look at the polls, you look at where their strongholds are. While they may have some widespread scattered support, it's not concentrated enough in any one constituency anywhere in Trinidad or Tobago. And I say this with the greatest of respect to the recently deceased Mr. Coker. You know, I don't think that they have any stronghold in any one seat sufficient to give them a majority. Yeah, but. Yeah. While you think about your thoughts, let's <laughs> yeah, no, 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 actually, actually was a bit harsh. Oh, sorry, in, I didn't in mean his, to be. Well, no, in the, no, in the comment meaning that Jack, pragmatic. no, no, if Jack cannot win as his stronghold, you can't say that was a stronghold of Jack. That was a stronghold of the UNC. And Jack was part of the UNC. But remember, but I remember made, Jack, Jack went up against the UNC. That's right. Well, right. Yeah. And was able to he threw that down seat. the gauntlet to the whole party. Yeah, but yeah. He was, and he defeated the entire party. He, 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 he alone. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But that the was, entire but that might a, of the party yeah, came down there. Scenario. Every night, the cabinet, the entire cabinet would be yeah. down in Chaguanas West campaigning for that by-election. And Jack Warner alone won that seat against the yeah. might of his entire I agree, cabinet. But the, 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 the tide have not changed in the way he have changed no i agree with you that he cannot go back there and win okay but, but at the point in time when the by when, when the when they went over the by election, the tide had not changed the people were still for jack well um, no no barry we are we are we are barry we are we are in violent agreement <laughs> <laughs> right. so nobody no but what i'm saying no. you are saying exactly what i'm right. saying but jack I'm, i think i have heard him mention that he would look in the Aruk, some Aruk has seen. I think I heard him. Uh, right now, right now, in the context and of... And most likely, he will be going along, some seat along the east-west corridor. Right now, in he the will context not go of into the politics, strong. that his, his fortunes have waned to such a point that it's just talk. Yeah, it, that, as I say, it's a spoiler, spoiler. Let, that, let that's me what just you play, are. there's a clip I want to play. Um, and what I want to get from it for you all is, if you could tell me, what strikes you about the ILP and Jack Warner when you take a note of... Now, this is coming after his loss in the... Following the, the by-election This was St. Joseph. Yeah, his loss in St. Joseph and right. whatnot. Uh, and there, was, there were comments 
beginning to circulate about the waning fortunes of the IOP. Mm -hmm. let's, let's listen to this clip. Uh, am I ahead of... After the ILP's defeat in the local government elections and the St. Joseph by-election, following its victory in the Shagwanas West by-election, the party's interim leader and deputy political leader had one message for those who have begun to dig its political grave. I would just like to tell you that for those persons who believe that the party is dying out there, we have news for them. I am here to tell you and reinforce what Mr. Warner says that the ILP is stronger than ever. Mr. Warner said at its meeting on Monday, the ILP's management team has decided to open four regional offices in Port of Spain, San Fernando, Tobago, and Point Fortin. Eight satellite offices are to be opened in Aruca, Faisabad, Point Pear, San Grande, San Juan, St. Augustine, Tabakit, and Tunapuna. The Tobago office will be opened on November 30th. On December the 1st, one day after, we are having our party convention so as to pass our ILP constitution. The draft has been completed. And what about the party's first internal elections? The election will be held three months after we have done something for March, early March, because we, we, we all elections, because we felt that what we had to do was to first build the party on the ground and after the constitution, then people will form their party groups and their, and their, and their constituency executive, their constituency councils, their youth arm, their women arm. And then out of that, you will have your elections. <laughs> All right. So, gentlemen, I, I don't know if it's a fair question to ask you, but what stands out in your mind about what, what he did at that particular point in time? What does it say about the man and money and how he handled, maneuvered that, that situation there? You, you've, you've won in, in your by-election, but you started to then show failing fortunes. Mm. People are talking about you. So what do you do? You go big. Yes. You yes. open several offices and yes. so on, so on, and so on, so But what is the position now, today? Yes, that, 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 that's the thing. It, it, it really is. Isn't the position, the people whom you saw him associated with when Even that was one done who spoke there, Anna Diona Ryan. She's right. no longer with them. Yeah, anymore. she's not there. She's not there. She's not and what you're seeing is the power of money. Yeah. Because money is what got him to do the things that he did, which couldn't be done otherwise. Yes. Yes. And, and, is that what and money you no money, longer have and, access. No, no, not, not just know, money. Not just money. Money and a tremendous work ethic and willpower. Right, because yeah. really and truly, we must give credit. The man is a beast for work. Yeah, but he does not stop we have to, working. We have so to, we have to, let, let, let's just let's just make sure we we. Yeah. Don't limit it to money alone. Because if we recall, in the campaign for the 2010 election, he was the hardest working person for that campaign. Every night he'd be on the platform speaking, and he would speak very eloquently. He would, you know, give very, you know, poignant and, you know, powerful speeches. So he, he has a tremendous capacity for work, and we must give credit in that regard. Yeah, but what, has, what, has, what had happened is that in the by-election, I think the people of Shagwanas first felt that they were betrayed because in the leading up to the Byron, because he had access to state resources, he was able to, to do a lot of things for the people. So the people, as it were, gravitated and said, well, Jack, Jack did this for us, Jack did that for not, us. Not only that, but if they say Jack stole, at least he's spending, we're getting some of that money here. Right. The other steal, and we never, see, we never benefit from but it. When that he, was actually being said. Mm -hmm. But when he went off into his own party, he no longer had access to state resources. So he could not deliver anything to the people of Shagwanas. And that is where the hemorrhaging started. People saying, well, 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 well I, I, would, I would just beg to differ slightly, um, and mm -hmm. as I say, I always defer to your knowledge as a media person, but the thing is, as I assessed it, it appeared that the hemorrhage occurred not so much that he didn't have access to state resources anymore. I think really and truly. In terms of that Chagwanas West by-election, his constituents stood with him because they said, hey, look, Mr. Warner, we are standing with you because you have been very instrumental in the UNC party. Exactly. I think that's exactly, yeah. that's right. And the point is, it's only when people realize, but wait, listen, there's no attempt at reproachment. He's not 
not trying to join back with the UNC or make exactly. back with the UNC because remember that talk was floating along exactly. very much. So in other words, I think people bought into it on that basis that mm -hmm. look, A, we want to send a message to the leadership of the UNC exactly. because they were dissatisfied. So they wanted to send a message. Jack was the perfect messenger at the time and he was the strongest person to do so. But however, I think it was done with the ultimate aim and objective that listen, Uncle Jack, this is our party. The UNC is our party. Exactly. So even though you've sent that message, okay, let's shake hands and make back. But he took a very different approach. He took a very antagonistic, confrontational approach. And I think the government reacted, and then they were just trading barbs. And I think positions hardened and crystallized to the point where egos got in the way, and then nobody would want to reach out to the other. So therefore, UNC is one way, ILP going another way, and all they're doing is throwing words at each other. And it has gotten worse even up to recently with the Prime Minister now distancing herself and saying that they received no finance, that she never received any financing from Mr. Warren. And, and, and I, can, I want to add a little to that. And probably Jaquana was trying to do what Basdeo Pandi would have done with Cop TD. You know, draw those people from, 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 from the UNC into the ILP debate. But that did not happen. Mm -hmm. That did not. He tried that. He tried to do that mm -hmm. with the with the urging of his his deep pocket, so to speak. But well, at the end of the day, yeah. not having. Remember, by 2013, Jack Sons had already pleaded guilty. For I don't think that had anything to do. With his it. his accounts, all his money dried up. He did no that. longer had power. access to state resources to do anything for the people. Because I actually heard um, some comment that. about um, the fact that didn't he promise so and so and so? Exactly. It has, hasn't yet been delivered? Yes. Right. All right. We, we, we're going to take a break at this point, And when we come back, we deal with, um, we, deal, we continue the discussion. And I raise a little point of limericks as we come back. <laughs> All right, and we're back and we're talking Jack Warner. Now, um, I would say this about um, what happened with, with um, the ILP, actually with Jack Warner before the ILP was born, in coming out of a by-election. I will put it this way. From, from where I sit, I could show you the mistakes that the UNC made that allowed Jack to maneuver into that position to succeed in that in that by-election, they actually, you know, sometimes for as um, as formidable as the UNC can be at times, sometimes they seem to make some colossal mistakes one after the other after the other. That sounds like you're still talking about THA elections too. <laughs> well, there, that's another issue. I, I still don't know that I have. All that went into that <laughs> THA election to explain the final outcome. But in respect of the Shagwana situation, it struck me that they provided him with the opportunity to, to walk as he did, to do what he did. Because he cleverly, he very cleverly used words and circumstances to kind of set them up and allow them to provide him with the excuse to turn his back on them as it were. Not only that, the situation with the people he's supposed to have helped, um, the fact, the perception that he had deep pockets, all of those things went towards um, helping his success. But the thing about that is, if after the end of the day when the dust is cleared, you don't start living up to your promises, you have, uh, the whole thing is going to come crumbling down on you. Now, one of the, the things about Jack Warner that I found most remarkable for a politician here, and I've seen it done before, it's not only has he changed the manner in which he, sp he speaks. Remember, when, before he left here, he used to stammer a lot and all of that? that he has, he's, he's changed that. Um, he's mastered that. He's gotten pretty witty or clever about how he introduces matters. But one particular technique that I found he uses is what it's, it's, it's the closest association I could find to it is what you call a limerick. It's a kind of a poem that rhymes it's supposed to be something humorous but this has an, a nasty political backlash to it now that saying that may not be of helpful to helpful to the public or there 
But I have an example tonight of something he said in relation to Google. Mm -hmm. This was um, when the Attorney General had revealed that he got some information from Google that cleared him and he wanted to pass it on to the, um, mm -hmm. the Integrity Commission. This is how, and, and I hope you guys upstairs are ready with it, this is how the um, Jack Warner dealt with that information and the Google issue. Listen to his lines. I find it passing strange that the AG is involved in Google. The AG writes Google. The AG goes to Google. The AG comes back with a Google document that he says vindicates him. And then the same AG is now using the court to stop the integrity commission, the state agency, from doing its job. Now, you see how he cleverly spoke about Google, mm -hmm. and then he tells it, and he said, mind you, the end part of it, which is really the sting in the tail, is not true. Mm -hmm. The uh, AG's intent was not never to stop the integrity commission, but to try and have that information be introduced as part of the body of information the integrity commission they were was at. itself trying yes. to get. Yes, yes, yes. But you see how he did it. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, he's been the politician, and I think what happens is, if you look at his style over the years, he has actually learned quite a lot from someone he fought quite a lot against, yeah. Basio Pandey. Pandey yeah. He learned a lot from Basio Pandey, and that speaking style you're talking about, yeah. int introducing witticisms, and mm -hmm. that, that's, that's Pandey's <laughs> thing. And <laughs> it's always smoke and mirrors, distraction. You, yeah. you give them you know, a nice teaser, and then you, know, you throw in something witty. And, you know, so, in other words, you end up, at the end of the day, so confusing the issue that nobody can really pin you down to anything. So it's actually quite good political style um, on his part to um, achieve the objectives he wants. Yes, except for, for that an approach of that sort, you have to go in with a certain amount of credibility so that as you throw the words around and you try to be witty about it, people will always hold on to something because they kind of have some still a little confidence in what you're saying. But when you come to this stage like now, where... Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I think that was a genuine mistake on his part where I think he got so over exuberant in yeah. trying to mount a defense so he that he was really he, being, he he thought he was really being clever there. And yes, he got one. Yeah, no, but um, it, 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 it backfired right. um, spectacularly on him. You know, but the thing is, at the end of the day, um, our politics has really morphed and changed, and we have seen persons who have been able to use the gift of gab that way, really and truly, to, you know, wheel their way around things. Um, but at the end of the day, and I, I guess it comes back to Barry's question, you know, I mean, is this what the public wants? Does the public still buy into that? Or do we see the deeper and bigger picture to say, well, okay, look, what's the substance of the issues? I am not quite sure that All we right. have gotten there yet. All right. how, how would you, if, with your permission, how would you look at the fact that Jack Warner would have associated himself with the, with the, with the PNM and all those parties opposed to the to the events well and i think that led to his losing the shagonas yeah. where seat even before the election is no, called no, i'm talking about in this in no in no the fact that there was the wrong table they had this wrong table and the fact that no jack warner being implicated in these charges and the unc would have said well okay we got rid of him already so you all have to deal with that baggage how would that reflect as far as the voting public council, but we all I, 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 don't, I, I don't think it would have that much of an impact, Barry, with the greatest of respect, because if you look at his long history, it's been more associated with the UNC yes. than with the wrong table. So the public will judge him on that. So in other words, basically, you are UNC at heart. You've been mingling now with PNM because you've been rejected by UNC. But you are UNC at heart, and yeah, that's but, how they would view yeah, it yeah, and measure him. Yeah, but the point is that they got rid of him for the same allegation was over, over his head. Yeah, but and then we get the UNC get rid of him and you all know taking him take him in <laughs> okay arms. but then I'll ask you a question but are you, are you sure they got rid of him because of that reason because no 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 listen to me listen to me no, I it was used <laughs> for that purpose yeah. it was used for that like, purpose like, in like, other words it provided a convenient opportunity like you are a journalist <laughs> 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 
you, you pointed more than that. that, 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 that. No, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. And you know, and I, I, I believe that, but from, from what the public knows, we only could. We should only base the fact that he w he was getting rid of of, the, of these allegations. Right. Yes. 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 But of course, he, they are so always but underlined. But, but, but the question, the politics. question is, why did the PNM pick him up? Why did PM embrace the him? Enemy of no, well, remember that's what right. right. remember that's what Doctor Rowley yeah, said. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. Oh, yes. so he so just transform from, from, from one day. And he was one of the was he was one of the person who wanted. To hang him out of office. Yes, but remember, Basdeo Pandey has explained that he said politics has a morality of its own. In that, in other words, remember, Pandey said he will be willing to sleep with the devil mm -hmm. in order to achieve power. So he you're saying Rowley is the same. No, the point is that Rowley is the same in the same realm. No, I'm not, to no I'm not saying that. The point is politicians think differently from us ordinary I mean, folks. Yeah, we know that. That, that, that. That's the reality. And things that we will consider and say, well, look, maybe we might draw the line. For them, expediency is usually the order of the day. In other words, what objective they want to achieve and by whatever means necessary, but that is usually now, applies. All, so, all his new found friends and has abandoned him. <laughs> so tell me something. There is, you know, what has been said so far in the news reports, there is clearly the indication that the government of the day was well aware of what was coming against Jack for at least two years. Mm -hmm. Because apparently there's been cooperation between the Trinidad Tobago government and the United States government for this period in time. Um, how has that, do you see that as being, the fact that they've gotten this heads up and this notice ahead of time, you see that as being manifest in anything that they've done so far in relation to Jack? Well, exactly. And that's why I say the use of that Simmons yeah. report appeared to be a very convenient point at which to jettison Mr. Warner because clearly they must have smelt the rat and they re realized that, look, there are bigger implications, international implications, if we keep this man. Yeah. So the Simmons report could not have come at a better time and was used as an opportunity to put that distance between themselves and Mr. Warner. But of course, it may not be so easy because Mr. Warner says he's going to come out with his evidence to show that he's been financing, you know, the party and stuff like that. And of course, this I now that. It, it further fuels his sense of betrayal in that he must have felt that if it is that there was this cooperation going on quietly for two years, and obviously he did not have wind of it, because you, you realize how That's this news true. took him by surprise, you know, he, so he must have felt... He didn't know that his sons were uh, in, in that... Yeah, I, I, no, I don't quite understand No, I'm I, I, talking I, yeah. about the Attorney General yeah, no, saying no, that no, they no. are cooperating. Again, even for that, years. I, I still have my little um, concerns here, because remember, he was... Minister of National Security at And now no going to say. Yeah, so, so I mean, maybe he you... might have known, he might have known, but the point is, he's been out of the party for more than a year. He's been out of the party for more than a year. How long is he really? More than two years? All, two years. Almost two years, that's yeah. what I'm telling you. So he wasn't, he wasn't Minister of National Security, and if you're talking two years, he wasn't Minister of National Security. So I think, basically, he obviously could not have imagined that this, he, he didn't have foreknowledge, certainly, that these things would have occurred um, you know, last week. He didn't have that foreknowledge no, at all. He wouldn't have that because it was... Um, it was a surprise even to those in Zurich. Was, yes. the, you remember, <laughs> these, these, grand, um, these subpoenas generally come out of... Um, sealed indictments, sealed yeah. Indictments. yeah. Yeah. So I, I, he didn't have any so foreknowledge. So he didn't so know that, that his sons had, 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 had been indicted? No, I would imagine he must have known that. I, I don't accept what um, he's trying to suggest in that regard. I, I would imagine but, clearly but because he says he speaks to them every day. So I, I would imagine that must have come are, up. One of his sons is on a committee of FIFA, you know? Yeah, one of his, one of his sons is on, them is on, a, on a lower committee of, of, of FIFA. I think he's the... Still? Well, yeah, it was. Well, it was. Well, no, but the question was that if the, if the Attorney General had some knowledge that they was investigating Warner and Mr. Warner was still in the government, how, how comfortable or uncomfortable it would have been for the... I don't think it was while he was but still in the government. Yeah. I don't think yeah, so. Yeah, yeah, the government so. used the Simmons report Thank yeah. you. to... 
jettison Mr. Right. Warner. I, yeah. I think that's exactly what yeah. happened. Yeah. And yeah. because, therefore, clearly they must have realized that, look, there are bigger yeah. international implications yeah. to this thing. So notwithstanding the warnings that were given by yeah. the PNM and right. other parties that yeah. said, hey, listen, you should cut ties with him because of these international implications, the Prime Minister stood by him. But I think when they realized that, look, <laughs> water is definitely more than flour, yeah. you know, they, they use the Simmons report as a convenient yeah. departure point. You recall that meeting, that Sunday at the Prime Minister's residence. What struck me, if you looked at that photograph when Mr. Warner was leaving the, the, the utter mm -hmm. like disbelief on his yeah. face, like is this really happening? When he tendered that resignation, I'm convinced that was a bluff. He did not expect yeah. the Prime Probably Minister accept to really accept it. it. Yeah, he a, did yeah, not accept. expect yeah. that. Because if he's one person the eating... The last thing he expected was that she yeah, was Yeah, because accepted. if he's one person eating, was on his side was the Prime Minister. That's right, yes. Yeah. I the fully believe that. I fully so, believe I think that was really the breaking point, point. and the turning point, and that's where and he, he, he now he felt, he he that's he right, the betrayal. Yes. And I'm convinced about that. All right, we're taking our final break for the evening and we'll be back again. All right, and we're back. We're talking about um, the circumstances um, relating to Jack Warner's uh, charges and the implications politically. What I want to look at now in the in the time we have left, would be the political implications to the parties that are still in the game. So let me ask it this way. Who benefits politically from this seeming demise of Jack Warner? Who Obviously benefits? the partnership would benefit because remember most of the of Jack supporters would have been coming from, from, from the partnership. And now that Jack has fallen from Grace, they will naturally make a, a beeline back to home. So I, I believe the partnership. Yeah, but I have not really been like um, no, no, but I, I think that um, Anderson is quite correct, and I think that the, the most glaring example of that would be the St. Joseph by election. If you looked at the numbers there, it would have been clear that the ILP was the perfect spoiler, spoiler mm -hmm. in that race. And you would recall the Prime Minister's speech after conceding defeat, in which she didn't concede defeat, but, you know, in that speech. And, and, right? was, and, and was mocked by Mr. Warner. That's right, because really and truly, he proclaimed his victory, quote unquote, just by being the spoiler. Mm -hmm. So if ILP is no longer a spoiler factor, that then throws a different light, I think, on St. Joseph and other places where ILP may have had a stronghold. I mean, Shogwana's West, I think, was lost um, quite some time ago. But um, certainly, I think the UNC and the partnership would be the major beneficiaries of this present unfolding scenario. These two guys have confidence in the... I, I, Trinidad and Tobago, so, no, 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 what I'm saying is, it has so much hypocrisy in, in the politics of Trinidad and Tobago. I think the politics on a whole will benefit. That politician will look at themselves now and decide, well, here, now, I cannot be, I cannot be fraudulent. I cannot afford to, to take kickback and thing because if that could happen to Jack Warner from a FIFA level and a politician, it could infiltrate into the politics. No, no, that's why I disagree with you. That's why I disagree with you. That's why I disagree with you. Just don't use the U.S. systems. <laughs> that's right. That's right. You do it locally. That's right. <laughs> so I totally disagree with you there. Right. I, I don't think our local politicians yeah. are in any yeah. way deterred yeah. Yeah. by these actions to think Jack that they would continue their local actions. So why you so why you have the confidence in the voters that these the action of of could 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 because this is not a local charge. That's the difference, Barry, and that's what we said from the start. Listen, it, it kicks it up a notch. If you, and and you, look at the example I used. Look at how me, the, those goodly gentlemen, um, Steve Ferguson and Ishwa Galbaran Singh, have been fighting tooth and nail to avoid facing charges yeah. in the U.S. Yeah. That's, the, that's the big difference here, because at the end of the day, you don't have that political clout. You don't have your friends who mm -hmm. could pull a favor or do a... Or you don't know any members of the judiciary. Who could resign? Who could resign? Thank you, tribunal. thank you, oh, well, <laughs> well, I, 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 that was I, 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 I,
So the second <laughs> question Party, is, why you pull back? The second <laughs> question is, whose <laughs> fortunes have been, dashed may be too strong a word, but prejudiced? Whose fortunes, <laughs> whose political fortune or fortune has been but I, I would think the Presidents. PNM definitely would yeah. be the one um, major Anything casualty Anything. of this um, entire scenario because at the end of the day, I think they were seriously counting on Mr. Warner to so do that fire. job. Yes, yeah. they were seriously counting on him to do that job because I think that certainly they were hoping even to make some inroads in Shabwana 